Hello and welcome to the next episode of Scenario Editor for Dummies. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how to spawn in units yeah, using triggers. So um, I'll do this in uh, three examples. Uh, yeah, well the first example is sim a simple ambush. So as soon as uh, your units move to a certain point, um, enemy units start spawning and attack you. So this is quite a simple one, as you will see shortly. Um, I use as an object, uh, as a um, condition, sorry, um, object in area. So as soon as a player one, so it's player one, has three or more object in this area, um, yeah, things happen and these things are um, create object player 2 and the unit should be in arbalist here and yeah now you can basically add as many units as you like um, a second arbalist over here and A third one, player two, back here. So let's quickly check it out. So I got my units here. As soon as they move too far. Yeah, when we use this body. And you see it's all simple and um, yeah, basically that's uh, how I for example did the ambushes in my strongbow scenario and so on. But however there's one thing I should mention. Um, let's quickly test it again. If there are units standing somewhere where you want to sp units to get spawned, it doesn't really work. You see, this time only two owlets got spawned because this tile here was already occupied by units, so you can't spawn units where other units are standing. This will be uh, a bit more important in the next example. So as you can see here, you got one unit and two buildings, and uh, I want to yeah, create um, that as soon as you move your unit uh, at a yeah, let's say let's say I create flex here. Um, as soon as you move into the flag area, um, units start spawning. But, however, this will also come to a price, so let's say a 20 gold or something per unit. So I actually need two triggers for this. It's oh, spawn to 2 and this is spawn to 1. Okay, the condition is um bring object to area this object to this area and the effect is create object player one let's say we want to have an archer and uh, player one has to pay 20 gold so tribute Player 1 to Gaia, uh, gold stockpile, Upsa, 20 gold. So, um, this will only work one time, so we have to loop it, so that is um, th that it can work yeah, multiple times. Um, 
but there's uh, still a catch to it I will show shortly so you got your uh, yawl here and as soon as you move here an archer spawns Yay. but as you see the archer is here I still um, continue losing gold as soon uh, as long as the yawl is standing uh, in that flagged area but uh, the additional archers couldn't spawn because the spawning site was obstructed so I have to move every single unit away from the so we need to optimize this trigger so there are addition is some um, things to be added um, first of all the unit has to move so that it uh, the, uh, the tile is free for the next unit to spawn so we'll select task object um, units in this area move to uh, this location and we also need another thing it's a timer so um, the unit has yeah well it has time to start moving before the next unit spawns so let's say timer is on 2 and another condition is needed um, as right now it isn't it's it isn't really checking if the player has the gold required to spawn units right now it just spawns units and if the player still has gold it tributes gold but if no gold is left the uh, spawning continues without paying tributes so um, player 1 has to uh, have uh, at least a gold stockpile of 20 gold so see the yarl is standing here and is not moving so you see as soon as I run out of gold the unit spawns stop so this yeah worked as intended and we can move on to the next example where well, you could uh, do the same thing for barracks and men at arms or militia or spearmen or whatever or you could uh, yeah, also spawn knights because the building isn't really uh, for the trigger the building isn't necessary it's just um, yeah, nice to see that if you move a unit in front of an arch range you get arches or some, something like that so um, the buildings aren't necessary they're just uh, yeah, for the looks um, alright So let's move on to the last example. This is uh, this one is a bit more complex. Um, so how are we gonna do this? Um, let's say the now let's basically do a timer here. Um, so this is a trigger of, uh, consisting of three parts. The first one is uh, simply activating the second one. As soon as a certain condition is met, in this case we got a little yeah, defensive position here and um, waves of attackers should come in. And these waves are just yeah, based on uh, how much time uh, passed. So let's say after a time of five has run out. The next trigger gets activated. It's a spawn to the second spawn three two. There it is. So uh, this has to be deactivated by default, and a looping is uh, on here. While the spawn 3-1 trigger is um, trigger starting state is on and trigger looping is off, because uh, the each wave needs to be triggered only one time. But as soon as the wave is triggered, um, the spawning needs to be looped as you want uh, multiple units uh, spawned. So let's say um, we got basically the same like in last um, in the last trigger. It's uh, create object. Uh, where is it? it's a condition 
fail. Okay. Um, create object player two, and let's say we want to have samurai spot here, and another unit like. Um, What could we use? Halberdier. <laughs> Let's use light careful we There it is. Over here. And they are tasked. Um, set area. In this area, there are tasked here. So this should work all right. Wait a second, let's better select knight for their lower um, aggression range. So, and the condition, of course, is again a timer of like two seconds. Um, because um, the when the units spawn, they need some time to walk where they're tasked. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. And the last trigger, as right now, this would yeah go on forever and ever. Um, and we want to have yeah distinctive waves of enemies, so um, that they st at one point start spawning, at another point stop spawning. So this is our stop trigger. Um, so it simply has a timer of like eight uh, seconds and the effect of this trigger is uh, to deactivate spawn 3 2 and this trigger is has no loop and is stating a starting state off as well and it also gets activated by the yeah, start trigger so let's say activate trigger spawn three three. So we basically basically here got one starting trigger, one unit spawning trigger, and one stop trigger. And in this case, the stop trigger also starts um, an attack move. Uh, this doesn't work. So uh, right now the attack move only has uh, lets you select objects. So if you want to. Uh, let objects uh, units attack that are spawned in the beginning of the of the map um, of the game. Uh, it doesn't work, so you need um, the task object trigger, so that you can select units in an area. They are player two's units, and the target is, let's say, this spearman. So we got the area, the location, player 2. Let's quickly double check um, task units of player 2. Um, the units are all of player 2's units. And the both of the triggers get activated here. So this should be working right now. Let's see if it does. Let's Marco Polo. So here you can see the unit spawning. And now they as soon as um yeah eight second eight seconds pass, so um as each spa unit spawn needs um two seconds time, yeah four of each type would spawn. And then as soon as all units were yeah, there, the attack started. So I hope you um, yeah, get an idea how to yeah, spawn units in your own scenarios now, and um, I'm sure you will have uh, you will find use for, for this as it's yeah, quite versatile. You can use it for uh, build and destroy, for RPG and um, explore scenarios. Um, they have yeah, uses in all of those in all of those maps. Uh, you could even do something like uh, CBA or um, yeah in that direction something. 
an arena battle uh, scenario. And um, yeah, it's basically it what I should want to show you on this scenario. And um, thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next video.